just that whenever he comes to visit, he plays this record of squid jigging music. Now, I like squid. I don't even mind jigging, but squid jigging music? <laughs> squid jigging music drives me crazy. Thing of it is, I couldn't tell Rodney. He always plays this music. Like I said, we're friends. And how do you tell a friend that you don't like something that they do? Yeah, Theodore and Fodak have always been good friends, too. But once, they weren't so sure. It was a calm and clear day in the harbor. Theodore and Fodak were returning from taking a small cargo ship out to sea. They decided to go the long way home past the rocky shore. Suddenly, Fodak's computer started making sounds. It was saying that there were big rocks under the water. And where there were rocks in harbors, there were always marker buoys. Now, in this particular part of the harbor lives a very special marker buoy. His name is Bedford, Bedford Buoy. And it so happens that one of Theodore and Fodak's most favorite things to do together is... Button Bedford, shouted Theodore. Now, Button Bedford is a special practice that Theodore and Fodak made up just for themselves. They would pretend that they were buttoning their tow ropes onto a big ship. Except with Bedford, the two liked to make it a race. Ready? Steady? Shouted Theodore. Go! Called Fodak, and the tugs were off. Theodore took the lead, but Fodak zoomed right past. Now Theodore picked up steam. Fodak seemed to be out of gas. Theodore was going strong. Then Fodak came along. Now both were side by side. Would one win or would they tie? Soon they were turning for the end, churning water as they went. At last the finish, coming up. And the winning one was... Fodak! Hooray! shouted Fodak. He was so excited about winning, he roared over and bumped Theodore. He bumped him so hard that it rattled Theodore right up to his smokestack. Theodore was very surprised. He didn't like being bumped that way. It hurt. That's not really part of the game, he said. But now we can be bumper buddies, said Fodak, who was still excited about winning the race. Bumping can be our new secret thing. Then Fodak bumped Theodore again, even harder than before. But all Theodore did was slowly move away. Where are you going? Called Fodor. I, I don't want to practice with you anymore, answered Theodore quietly. Well, Fodor wondered what could be the matter with his friend. So he just floated there with his computer working away. Theodore floated away before Fodor could see him because he was feeling very, very sad. This new bumping by Fodor was no fun. It was no fun at all. A little later that day, George was at the great ocean dock when Theodore drifted by. I have a question, said Theodore. Not really a, a question. I was just kind of wondering, should tugs ever bump each other? Ships don't like being bumped, said George. It could damage them. The pilot boats always say, don't bump. A good tug is a gentle tug. What if a tug bumps you? asked Theodore. Who did that? said George. Oh, um, no one, replied Theodore. George was puzzled by Theodore's strange question. And then he said, We have a big job tomorrow. We have to bring in a container ship. The dispatcher has ordered me and two other tugs. Who are the other tugs? asked Theodore nervously. You and Fodak, replied George. Fodak. And that was what Theodore was afraid of. What if Fodak bumped him again? He really didn't like being bumped. What could he say? The next morning, Theodore and Fodak were helping bring the ship, whose name was Gloria Cornwallis, into port. Gloria was piled high with big containers to be unloaded on shore. George was up front, puffing and pulling away. 
The closer they got to the dock, the more worried Theodore became. He was afraid that when they were finished, Fodot would bump him again, and it would hurt. While Theodore was worrying so much about what would happen after he had docked the ship, he wasn't paying any attention to what was happening right then, while he was still working. Careful now, Theodore, called Pearl, the pilot boat. Yes, please, added Gloria. Theodore, watch out, Theodore, cried Pearl. But it was too late. Poor Gloria. The back of the big ship bumped right into the dock. That hurt, said Gloria. Sorry, Theodore said softly. We'll talk about this later, Theodore, announced Pearl. Theodore returned to the Great Ocean Tug and Salvage Company dock, and it wasn't long before Pearl appeared with a very sour look on her face. All Theodore could do was stare at the water. That wasn't a very good job, Theodore, said Pearl sternly. I'm very sorry, Pearl, said Theodore. It won't happen again. Pearl told Theodore that he would need to do a better job tomorrow. Tomorrow? repeated Theodore. Yes, Theodore, replied Pearl, when you take the ship back out of the harbor with George and Foda. Theodore went to his secret hiding place to hide and to think. It was under an oil rig whose name is Owen. Theodore hoped that if he could hide under Owen, he wouldn't have to work with Fodak tomorrow. That way, Fodak couldn't bump him anymore. Well, who should appear but Hank? Hey, Fodak's looking for you, Theodore, said Hank. I'll go tell him I found you, he said happily. No, said Theodore, surprising Hank with how strongly he had said it. Theodore certainly didn't want Hank telling Fodak where he was. That would ruin everything. So he said to Hank, Hank, do you want to practice buttoning Bedford with me? Hank knew it was a special thing that only Theodore and Fodak did together. Would I ever, he said, and the two tugs headed off together. When Hank returned home, he found Fodak near his dock looking very puzzled. Hank, have you seen Theodore? asked Fodak. Sure, replied Hank. We were just buttoning Bedford. Well, Foda couldn't believe his ears. Theodore wouldn't button Bedford with him the day before. Why did he do it with Hank now? Fodak floated over a little closer to George. I have a question, said Fodak. Not really a question. I was just kind of wondering. What if someone doesn't want to work with you and does your special practice with someone else? Does, does that mean you're not friends? Who did that? said George. Oh, no one, replied Fodak. George was confused. It certainly seemed everyone had a lot of questions about no one lately. It was getting late. The sun was setting over the harbor, casting scary shadows beneath Owen the oil rig. Theodore was wondering how long forever would be, for that was as long as he thought he would need to hide. Suddenly, he heard a creaky sound. Owen, is that you? He called softly. Owen? But Owen was sound asleep. Theodore saw an especially scary shadow heading straight for him. Hi, Theodore. Theodore nearly jumped out of his bumpers. It was Foduck. Theodore, are you still my friend? Well, Theodore didn't answer right away. Then Foduck gave him a little bump. Theodore backed slowly away from Foduck and said, Foduck, I'm not your friend anymore. Now, I'm still not sure if Theodore really meant to say that he wasn't Fodak's friend anymore. He just didn't want Fodak to bump him again, because his bumps really hurt. And he didn't know how else to say that to Fodak. Well, Fodak was so sad and upset about not being Theodore's friend, he didn't know what to say either. 
So he just turned and floated silently for home. Theodore was every bit as sad and upset as Fodak, but all he could think about was what would happen tomorrow when the two tugs would be working together. Would Fodak bump him again? The next day, Theodore and Fodak helped take Gloria Cornwallis back out to the mouth of the harbor. They were very quiet. The two didn't even toot to each other the whole way. Fair to unbutton. Ordered Pearl. Finally, the ship was at the harbor entrance. Theodore and Fodok tooted their goodbyes and headed toward the rocky shore. The two tugs drifted along, neither saying a word. Suddenly, Fodok's computer made a single loud sound. Sure enough, they were right near Bedford Buoy. It's a good day to button Bedford, said Fodak hopefully. But I guess we can't since we're not friends anymore. Theodore was silent for a long time. Then he gathered his courage. Fodak, I, I just don't like it when you bump me, Theodore said quietly. It hurts. Well, that made Fodak sad. I didn't mean to hurt you, Theodore, Fodak said. I only thought it was fun. Why didn't you tell me you didn't like it? I was afraid that if I told you how I really felt, you wouldn't be my friend anymore, answered Theodore. From now on, Fodak said finally, let's promise to tell each other if we don't like something the other one is doing. Theodore turned away from Fodak. Fodak wondered if Theodore was still upset with him. Finally, Theodore spoke up. Ready? Steady? He shouted. Fodak knew just what to say next. Go! And the two friends raced toward Bedford with big happy smiles. And if you were to ask Bedford Bowie, that was the best buttoning he had ever had. Most of all, because the tugs took special care not to bump him either. After all, no one, not even marker buoys, like to be bumped. Well, I'm glad that Theodore and Fodak got that bumper buddy business straightened out. I guess a real friend is someone you can tell the truth to. Oh, speaking of real friends, did I tell you that my friend Rodney came by to see me? I told him, I said, I don't like squid jigging music. You know what he said? He said he only played it because he thought I liked it. You imagine. <laughs> well, we'll see you again next time here in the Big Harbor. So long for now. No, 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 I, I'm sorry. I, I don't like squid chicken music. It drives me crazy. Theodore. He's a tugboat and a friendly tugboat, too. A friendly tugboat, too. Oh, Theodore. Likes to do the things that friendly tugboats do. Pushing and a pulling in the great big harbor in the great big world is so much fun. So many brand new things to discover. Waking with the sun, gotta get the job done. Oh, Theodore and Emily, Fodak, Hank and George, and the harbor master too. Oh, Theodore.